name higher than his name. And we should bless his name at all times for that. Because he is an awesome God. And he's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. Before we commune this morning, I would like to talk to you from these words. The importance of communion. The importance of communion. You may be seated. The question is, what is the importance of communion? The answer would be, a study of communion is a soul-stirring experience because of the depth of meaning it contains. It was during the age-old celebration of the Passover on the eve of his death that Jesus instituted a significant new fellowship meal that we observe to this day. It is an integral part of Christian worship. It causes us to remember our Lord's death and resurrection and to look for his glorious return in the future. The Passover was the most sacred feast of the Jewish religious year. It commemorated the final plague on Egypt when the firstborn of the Egyptians died and the Israelites were spared because of the blood of the lamb that was sprinkled on their doorpost. The lamb was then given and roasted and eaten with unleavened bread. God's command was that throughout the generations to come, the feast would be celebrated. During the Last Supper, or Passover celebration, Jesus took a loaf of bread and gave thanks to God. As he broke it and gave it to his disciples, he said, this is my body given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. He concluded the feast by singing a hymn, and they went out into the night to the Mount of Olives. It was there that Jesus was betrayed as predicted by Judas. The following day, he was crucified. Uh, the accounts of the Lord's Supper are found in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Uh, the Apostle Paul wrote concerning the Lord's Supper also in 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 29. Paul includes a statement not found in the Gospels. He said, therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. We may ask what it means to partake of the bread and the cup in an unworthy manner. It may mean to disregard the true meaning of the bread and cup, and to forget the tremendous price our Savior paid for us and our salvation. I don't know about you today, but I never want to forget what he done for me. Do I have anybody in here that don't want to forget what he's done for you? You know that you should be dead and sleeping in your grave. You know that your life should be over. Some of you should be locked up. Some of you should be once again in the crazy house but he decided to die for you and he decided to die for me. Or it may mean to allow the ceremony to become a dead and formal ritual or to come to the Lord's Supper with unconfessed sins. 
I don't want this just to be a ritual or a tradition. I want it to be down in my heart that I remember that the Lord died for me. How many want it to be down in your heart? You just don't want to come every fourth Sunday just to be coming and saying, oh, I'm just going to do it. That's the wrong attitude when you take communion. When you take communion, you have to remember that he hung, bled, and died for you. You see, nobody else could do it. He had to do it. Before he did it, they would use, they would use animals to do it. They would sacrifice animals' blood. But God said, I got to do something better than that. So he decided to go to Calvary. He decided to go to Calvary. He went on his own. He went to Calvary. Nobody pushed him to Calvary. He went to Calvary on his own. And he decided to die. Are you glad that he decided to die? Well, tell somebody next to you, I'm glad he decided to die. Another statement Paul made is that, that is not included in the gospel accounts is for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And otherwise, you got to recognize his death. You got to remember his death. You have to reflect on his death. You got to be able to see him in your mind, how he hung on the cross and how they drove the nails in his hand and how they drove the nails in his feet and how they put the crowns on his head. They made fun of him. They said, you are supposed to be a king, so we're going to give you a crown. But my God never said a mumbling word because he looked into the future and he saw you and he saw me and he said, I'm going to hang here for them because I got to give them a comforter. Are you glad that he decided to die and give you a comforter? I don't know about you, but I don't mind saying I'm glad that he died. Some people take it lightly, but I don't take it lightly that he died because if he had not went to the cross, we would all be lost. But I'm glad he found me one day. When I was in my sins, he found me. No, I wasn't a good church boy all my life. He found me when I was in my sins. Did he find you when you were in your sins? Well, you need to thank him for the blood. I said, you need to thank him for the blood. Do I have any thankful people in this place for the blood? Well, show me that you're thankful. Open up your mouth and say, thank you. He declared that the bread spoke of his body, which would be broken. There was not a broken bone, but his body was so badly tortured that it was hardly recognized. The wine spoke of his blood, indicating the terrible death he would soon experience. He, the perfect son of God, became the fulfillment of the countless Old Testament prophecies. When he said, do this in remembrance of me, he indicated this was a ceremony that must be continued in the future. It is indicated also that the Passover, which required the death of a lamb and looked forward to the coming of the Lamb of God. Are you waiting on his coming? Are you ready for his coming? I don't know about you, but this world is getting crazier and crazier. And God could crack the sky sooner than you think. As a matter of fact, before we leave this place, he can crack the sky. It's just that close. So I'm telling you today, don't play with God. Tell somebody, don't play with God. God is not a toy. God is not, God is not a toy. He's not a pet. God is the almighty God. And he could crack the sky before you know it. So what do we need to do, Pastor? We need to get ourselves in order. You see, things are all out of order right now. But we need to get ourselves in order. Uh huh. Preachers need to get their self in order. Deacons need to get their self in order. 
Missionaries need to get their self in order. Young people, get yourself in order. God is on his way back. And if you don't want to miss the rapture, get yourself in order. Tell somebody, get yourself in order. Order in the house. There has to be order in the house. God is a God of order. All you got to do is follow his order. Somebody said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. But no, we want to do it on our own. And we don't mind missing church because we're trying to get things. But you got to seek ye first the kingdom of God. And it's easy. And all these things will be added unto you. You don't have to work for it. All you got to do is seek God. Tell somebody we need to seek God. The new covenant replaced the old covenant. When Christ, the Passover lamb, was sacrificed, the sacrificial system was no longer needed. Communion is a remembrance of what Christ did for us and a celebration of what we receive as a result of his sacrifice. So my brothers and sisters, in other words, again I say to you, don't run from the table, but run to the table. Tell somebody, don't run from the table. Run to the table. You see, coming to the table should be a celebration and not a funeral. Because if you don't know it or not, he is alive. Tell somebody he is alive. You might be saying, Pastor, how do you know that he's alive? Because he's on the inside of me. I know he's alive because I can feel him down on the inside. Do I have anybody in this house that can feel him on the inside? Uh-huh, sometimes it gets tough, but you know that he's on the inside. And then if you know he's on the inside, you don't mind praising him. And I told you, never forget about the blood. Tell somebody, never forget about the blood. When you forget about the blood, you start disrespecting God. But I will never forget about the blood. I'm glad he hung, bled, and died. If you don't think he did it for you, I'm glad he did it for me. Are you glad that he hung, bled, and died for you? Well, you need to be happier than you are. If I can think of something, I can think like this. I, I wouldn't die for none of y'all. But God decided to die. Not only did he decide to die, but he took a beating for you. He took a beating for me. And that's why we can say by his stripes, uh -huh, we are already healed. So if I have any sick folk in here, you're already healed. And when you come down to the table, look for your healing. God will give you your healing. He will heal you physically. Uh -huh. He will heal you financially. He can heal you spiritually. Do I have anybody in this house that need a fresh anointing? You can get your fresh anointing at the table. Tell somebody your fresh anointing is at the table. Tell somebody your healing is at the table. Tell somebody your spiritual blessing is at the table. Don't run. For God's sakes, don't don't run from the table. Uh, don't run from the table. Uh, run to the table. Uh, and if you're doing anything wrong, uh, get it right before you come to the table. Uh, I told you last time, uh, get some table manners. Uh, don't come to the table any kind of way. Uh, come with your heart open. Uh, crying out, Lord, uh, help me. Does, 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 does anybody need some help today? Uh, does anybody need some help today? Uh, I need, I need some help. I need some help. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Do I have anybody in here that can praise him for his help? Has he ever came and seen about you? You was down and out and ready to give up. But the blood, I said the blood. Somebody put it this way. The blood still works. The blood the blood. The blood still works. I said the blood still works. It has never. I said it has never. 
I said it has never. Uh, the way some people act, uh, they act like it forgot uh, that it had power, uh, but the blood has never uh, lost its power. Uh, just about it has never. Uh, it has never uh, lost its power. Somebody said there's power, power, wonder working power uh, in the blood. Uh, how many know that there's power in the blood? Uh, how many know that there's power uh, in the blood? Uh, and let me tell you, uh, I know it was the blood. Uh, I, I know it was the blood. Uh, I know it was the blood for me. Uh, one day when I was lost, uh, Jesus died uh, on the cross. Uh, and I know, uh, tell somebody, I know, uh, I know. Uh, it was the blood, uh, it was the blood, uh, it was the blood uh, for me. to tell me you can't praise him for the blood. You can't praise him for the blood. You can't praise him for the blood. You're so into formality uh, that you can't shout before communion. Uh, I can shout right now uh, because of the blood. Uh, I can speak in tongues right now uh, because of the blood. Uh, do I have, uh, do I have anybody uh, that can shout right now uh, because of the blood? somebody the blood prevails no matter what you're going through the blood prevails people don't want to talk about the blood no more but it still works come on deacons and let's commune remember don't run from the table run to the table. And just before we commune, maybe there's something that's not right in your life. There are sins of commission and there are sins of omission. Maybe you committed a sin or maybe you omitted to do something God still loves you. See, the devil wants you to think that it's over, but it's not over. Tell somebody, it's not over. Don't get down on yourself. Get yourself right and repent. What does repent mean? It means to turn. Somebody in here this morning needs to turn. Of course, our God is a God of one chance, two chance, three chance, or four chances. But we as men do not know when it's our last chance. So today, this could be your last chance. You need to come now. You need to come now. Don't sit there knowing that you've done something wrong and then come and commune with him. That lets me know right there, you don't know what the blood is all about. The blood can wash away your sins. Somebody said, what can wash away my sins? And the answer came back, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Come now, don't worry about who's looking at it. It's between you and God right now. There's not an embarrassing moment right now. Come now. Somebody needs to be restored. Come now. Come now. The altar is open. I'm not going to rush you. Something's going to tap you in your mind and tell you, go get it right. Tell somebody, go get it right. 
but I remember Why sit there until you die? That be the Get up. He already provided the blood for you. Are you trying to tell me his sacrifice wasn't good enough for you? I'm asking you, Lord, to restore me Your friend is coming. Sin has left me so empty. Don't let your friend drag you to hell. Right now. Break a loose and come to the altar now. Just before we commune, maybe there's someone that wants to be baptized into the name Lord Jesus Christ. You need to come now. Maybe there's someone that wants to be filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues. As the Spirit of God give utterance, come now. I will hold up the communion for you. But you got to come now. Cloud my mind. Didn't pass the test. I walked in pride. Somebody said, whatever you're doing, Lord, Sin don't do it without me. Left me. So empty inside. Right now I'm ready. Glory. 